Learning New Zealand native plants, many people think, is a fairly daunting task. But when you look at numbers, it really isn't. We have about 2,700 species of indigenous plant. When I say species, I'm including subspecies, variety, and the rank. And in fact, most of our plants, with the exception of some alpine groups, are generally not species rich, so there's not a lot of species to learn. There are a few tricky ones. For example, Caprosma. Caprosma belong to the Rubiaceae, comes from the genus Rubia, which is one of the matters. It's used for dyeing fabrics and things, giving it kind of a rich colours found in, in the Mediterranean. And another common member of the Rubiaceae is coffee, Cophea arabica. Caprosma itself was first described from New Zealand by Johan and Jorg Forster, who collected material on the second voyage that Captain Cook did into the Pacific region. And the name Caprosma itself is a bit of an interesting one. It comes from Greek, Copros, dung. And that alludes to the type specimen of the genus, Caprosma fetidissima, known to uh, iwi as haupero, smelly wind, stinks. It has a very strong, powerful, dung-like odour. There are a number of easy ways to recognise a caprosma. You can generally in the field work out whether you're looking at a caprosma and then go to species level using keys quite quickly. So the selection of caprosma I have here ranges from the large leaf species to the small leaf species. First of all, they tend to have leaves that are opposite. So there's a leaf here running up the stem and they're on either side of the stem. They're not alternately arranged up the stem. The next thing is if you look on the top of the leaf, and this is very evident in the large leaf species like this, you can see along the midrib that there's some raised bumps. And if you look at the underside of the leaf, you'll see that where the midrib and the side vein joins in, there's a little pit, a little hole. So the raised bump on the top of the leaf is a surface expression of a little pit on the underside. These pits are called Dematia, which literally means the house of a mite. It was a name given by a researcher who found them who speculated that mites may be live in them. The funny thing is, we've now found that mites often do, although whether there is a genuine relationship between the mite and the caprosma, we're not sure. The other character you need to look for is what's called an interpetiolar stipule. Here is a leaf pair, they're opposite. Here is a petiole, which is a stalk that subtends the leaf, and between those two petioles is a little collar, like a little sheet sticking up, and that's called a stipule. Interpetiolar because it's between the petioles, stipule. Caprosma are also sexually dioecious. So what that means is that you have male and female flowers. In this one, it's got the distinctive female flowers, which are just basically stigmas and nothing else. That's because it's wind-pollinated. So it doesn't need the gaudy petals to attract a pollinator. It just needs to get its reproductive organs out there to pick up pollen. And this is clearly a female. Here we've got some immature fruit. So this one's been well fertilized. Fruits are also quite diagnostic. They typically are fleshy on the outside. They have uh, colours that range from orange and yellow through to white and blue. You can eat the fruit, it's a bit insipid, tastes a bit like an off tomato, but inside you'll find very large pair of seeds called pyrenes, and the shape of the pyrene is highly diagnostic of the species. The two common ones in Auckland are Caprosma macrocarpa, Caprosma robusta, and also Caprosma lucida, which we don't have here. How do you tell those two apart? Robusta, the best way to work it out is put your finger at the tip of the leaf and run down the margin. You can actually hear a slight sort of crackling sound, and you'll feel something like a little jagged sort of roughness on your finger. Some people say it's a bit like being licked by a cat's tongue. It's got that rough sort of texture, and that goes all the way down to the base. If you've got that, you've got Caprosma robusta straight away. Whereas in the case of Caprosma macrocarpa, Cricarpa, it's smooth all the way to the base. These two hybridize a lot, so be aware that that can happen too, and hybrids will be intermediate. Learning the small leaf caprosmas is a little bit more tricky, and I'm not going to go into how you recognize the different species here, but just to show you the diversity of form. All of them are what we call filly ramulet. Filly, a child, ramulus, branchlets, so small branchlets is what, what that means. And another common term for them is devaricating. What it means is you have lots of little leaves and lots and lots of little branches often interlaced. So here's a very common species in Auckland, caprosma ramnoides. Here's another very common one, caprosma areolata, and then here is caprosma spathulata, in this case subspecies spathulata with immature fruit. But no matter how small the leaves are, you're always going to find the leaves are opposite rather than alternate. There's going to be interpetiolar stipules and there will be domatia somewhere on the leaf. Although in very small leaf species it can be quite tricky to find. See those characters? You've got caprosma and at least you can impress everyone by going, I've found a caprosma.